Europa is a moon of Jupiter about the size of Earth's moon, which has an icy surface that probably hides a subsurface ocean. We are closer to alien life than most people realize, not in a distant future, not in science fiction, but on a calendar that ends in 2027. NASA launched Europa Clipper in October 2024 with a quiet but radical goal to search for life beneath the ice of Jupiter's moon Europa. Beneath that frozen shell is an ocean larger than all of Earth's oceans combined, and scientists believe it may be leaking clues into space right now. We are not waiting for a landing or a drill. The main things that we're going to explore at Europa are the ice and the ocean and understand that intersection between the two, study the chemical composition of the moon. We are waiting for data, signals, chemistry, proof that life does not need Earth to exist. We're almost there, and what arrives first may force scientists to rethink everything they thought they knew. The year the search changes. In 2027, a stream of data will arrive from deep space, and scientists will know almost instantly whether the search for alien life has crossed a line it can never step back from. Not a photo, not a footprint, numbers, spectra, magnetic readings, and chemical fingerprints will begin to tell a story that no telescope on Earth could ever reveal. This is not a distant dream or a hypothetical future. The spacecraft is already flying. The clock is already running. Humanity has been hunting for life beyond Earth for generations, but every previous attempt shared the same limitation. We were looking in places that were either dry, frozen, or long dead. Mars dominated the conversation because it was familiar and close, but familiarity does not equal promise. While rovers scraped dust and drilled ancient rock, a far more radical target waited in the shadows of Jupiter. Europa changes everything. Beneath Europa's fractured ice shell lies a global ocean of liquid water, kept warm by tidal forces as the moon is flexed by Jupiter's immense gravity. This is not a shallow sea trapped under ice, it is an ocean that may contain more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. More importantly, it has energy, chemistry, and time, the three ingredients life requires to take hold. That combination does not exist on Mars today. NASA's Europa Clipper mission was built around this realization. Launched in October 2024, it is the most ambitious mission ever sent to study an ocean world. But what makes it revolutionary is not where it is going, it is how it will search. Europa Clipper will not land, it will not drill through miles of ice. Instead, it will execute a long series of precise flybys, skimming past Europa again and again, sometimes from just a few dozen kilometers above the surface. Over 40 times, the spacecraft will pass through Europa's environment, scanning, sampling, and listening. Each flyby adds another layer to a growing picture, one built not on guesses, but on hard measurements. From 2027 onward, as Europa Clipper settles into its rhythm around Jupiter, the real science begins. Instruments designed to detect organic compounds, salts, heat signatures, and magnetic disturbances will start sending back their first meaningful results. If water vapor plumes are erupting from Europa's surface, Clipper may fly straight through them. If the ocean is chemically active, the evidence will not stay hidden. This is why 2027 matters. We are not talking about aliens waving from an icy horizon. We are talking about microbial life, simple organisms that may thrive in darkness, pressure, and cold. Yet discovering even the faintest sign of such life would be one of the most important moments in human history. It would mean life is not rare. It would mean Earth is not unique. And the most unsettling part is this. The first clue may not arrive with fanfare or headlines. It may arrive silently, buried in data, waiting for someone to realize what it means. Europa, an ocean world, hiding in plain sight. At first glance, Europa looks dead. Its surface is a frozen shell of ice, scarred by long fractures that stretch for thousands of kilometers. There are no mountains, no volcanoes, no signs of weather or erosion. Yet this frozen face is not a sign of stillness, it is evidence of motion. Europa's surface is crisscrossed by dark lines called ridges, where ice has split apart and refrozen again and again. In some regions, the terrain looks shattered and jumbled, as if the surface collapsed and shifted shifted before locking back into place. Scientists call these regions chaos terrain, and they are among the strongest clues that something is moving below the ice. 
Ice does not behave this way unless it is being pushed, warmed, or broken from beneath. That something is an ocean. Beneath Europa's icy crust lies a global ocean of liquid water buried under an ice shell that may be anywhere from a few kilometers to several tens of kilometers thick. Even at the most conservative estimates, this ocean contains more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. It is not trapped in isolated pockets. It wraps entirely around the moon, a vast dark sea hidden in plain sight. What keeps it liquid is not sunlight, it is gravity. As Europa orbits Jupiter, the gas giant's immense gravitational pull stretches and squeezes the moon. This constant flexing generates heat deep within Europa's interior, a process known as tidal heating. That heat rises, preventing the ocean from freezing solid and possibly driving chemical reactions at the boundary between water and rock. On Earth, similar processes occur along the ocean floor, far from sunlight, where hydrothermal vents support entire ecosystems. This is where skepticism often breaks down. Life on Earth does not depend on the sun as much as we once believed. In the deepest oceans, organisms survive by feeding on chemical energy released from rock and water interactions. Bacteria thrive near hydrothermal vents in crushing pressure and total darkness. Beneath Antarctica's ice, microbial life persists in subglacial lakes that have been sealed off for millions of years. Europa may offer conditions that are not just similar, but even more stable over geological time. Critics argue that Europa is simply too cold, too distant, too hostile. But hostility at the surface tells us very little about what lies below. Europa's ice acts as a shield, protecting the ocean from radiation and surface chaos. The environment beneath may be calm, chemically rich, and unchanged for billions of years. That kind of stability is rare in the solar system. Europa is not another icy moon frozen in time. It is an active world, shaped by forces we understand, and environments we know can support life. The cracks on its surface are not scars, they are signals. Signals that an ocean moves below, that energy flows through it, and that chemistry is at work in the dark. Europa does not need forests or sunlight to matter. It needs water, energy, and time. And Europa has had all three for longer than humanity has existed. Europa Clipper, the mission, built to hunt habitability. Europa. Clipper was not designed to rush in and plant a flag. It was designed to survive, observe, and return again and again to the same mysterious world until patterns begin to emerge. That decision starts with its orbit. Instead of circling Europa directly, the spacecraft will orbit Jupiter, looping through the giant planet system in a carefully planned path that allows repeated close passes of the moon. This approach avoids prolonged exposure to the most intense radiation while still allowing Europa Clipper to get dangerously close when it matters most. Radiation is the silent threat in the Jupiter system. Jupiter's magnetic field traps high-energy particles that can damage electronics, scramble data, and shorten a spacecraft's life. Europa Clipper was built with this danger in mind. Its sensitive components are shielded within a hardened vault, and its systems are designed to endure repeated blasts of radiation that would destroy most spacecraft. Survival is not a bonus here. It is a requirement. The mission's power lies in repetition. Europa Clipper will conduct 45 flybys of Europa, each one planned to target a different region, angle, and altitude. Some passes will skim the surface from just a few dozen kilometers above the ice. Others will pull back to study Europa as a whole. Over time, these encounters will allow scientists to connect local details to global processes. One flyby can mislead. 45 can reveal the truth. Each instrument on board plays a specific role in answering one central question. Is Europa's ocean capable of supporting life? An ice-penetrating radar will send signals deep below the surface, mapping the thickness of the ice and searching for pockets of liquid water trapped within it. These subsurface lakes could act as stepping stones between the surface and the ocean below. Spectrometers will analyze the surface chemistry in fine detail, identifying salts, organic molecules, and compounds that hint at interactions between water and rock. A magnetometer will measure subtle changes in Europa's magnetic environment, allowing scientists to calculate the depth and salinity of the hidden ocean. A thermal imager will scan for warm spots that suggest recent or ongoing eruptions, places where material from below may be reaching the surface. Together, these instruments do something powerful. They provide context. Europa Clipper is not searching for life directly. It is building a case. Liquid water alone is not enough. Chemistry matters. 
energy matters, stability matters. By layering data from different instruments across dozens of flybys, scientists can determine whether Europa's ocean is chemically active, connected to the surface, and capable of sustaining biology over long periods of time. This mission is about understanding a world, not just visiting it, one mission scientist explained. We are trying to learn whether the ingredients for life come together on Europa in a way that actually works. That distinction is critical. Europa Clipper is not a gamble or a blind search. It is a methodical investigation designed to eliminate guesswork. Every measurement feeds into the same story, one about habitability, not hope. If life exists in Europa's ocean, it will not announce itself. But Europa Clipper has been built to notice the quiet signs it leaves behind. Why 2027 matters, plumes, chemistry, and first clues. The most important discoveries of the Europa Clipper mission may not wait for its closest encounters. As the spacecraft begins its approach to Jupiter from 2027 onward, it will start collecting distant and medium-range observations that can already change everything. These early measurements are capable of delivering the first real clues about whether Europa's hidden ocean is alive with chemistry. One of the most anticipated targets is something that should not exist on a frozen moon, plumes. Observations from past missions suggest that Europa may occasionally vent water vapor into space through cracks in its ice. These plumes, if confirmed, would act like natural geysers, ejecting material from the ocean below straight into space. For astrobiologists, this is the best possible scenario. Sampling the ocean without drilling through kilometers of ice has long been considered the holy grail of Europa exploration. As Europa Clipper flies through or near these plumes, its instruments will analyze their composition in real time. Spectrometers can identify organic molecules, salts, and compounds that reveal how water interacts with rock at the ocean floor. Certain chemical ratios can indicate whether energy is available to support metabolism, even in total darkness. This is not about finding life directly, it is about finding an environment where life could realistically survive. Habitability clues are subtle but powerful. Scientists look for combinations rather than single signals. Liquid water alone means little without dissolved salts that enable chemistry. Organic molecules matter more when they appear alongside evidence of energy gradients. Even the salinity of the ocean can tell a story, hinting at long-term circulation and stability rather than stagnant water locked in isolation. What makes 2027 so critical is timing. These early detections will guide everything that follows. If plumes are detected repeatedly, future flybys can be redirected to pass directly through them. If certain regions show unusual chemistry or thermal activity, mission planners can prioritize those areas for the lowest altitude passes in the year ahead. The mission is flexible by design, able to adapt based on what the data reveals. Even ambiguous results can have enormous consequences. A faint organic signature or an unexpected chemical imbalance may not prove life exists, but it would instantly raise new questions. Are these molecules being produced by geology alone, or do they hint at something more complex? Are they widespread or localized? Are they stable over time? The most unsettling possibility is that the first strong hint of life arrives quietly, not in a dramatic press conference, but as a pattern noticed by scientists staring at spectra on a screen, a peak where none should be, a ratio that refuses to make sense, a signal that demands another look. By the time Europa Clipper begins its lowest flybys in the 2030s, the story may already be unfolding. The difference is that by then, scientists will know where to look and why. 2027 is the moment when Europa stops being a mystery and starts becoming a test. A test of whether life can arise in places we once dismissed as impossible. From signs to proof, what comes after the first discoveries? If Europa Clipper detects something unusual, the reaction will not be celebration, it will be hesitation. Scientists are trained to doubt their own excitement, especially when the stakes are this high. History is filled with premature claims of alien life that collapsed under closer scrutiny. This mission is built to avoid that mistake. The first distinction scientists make is between habitability and life itself. 
Habitability means the conditions are right, liquid water, usable chemistry, and a source of energy. It does not mean anything is living there. Biosignatures are more specific. They are chemical or physical patterns that life tends to produce, such as certain organic molecules appearing in ratios that geology struggles to explain. Even then, biosignatures are not proof. Confirmation requires repeated observations, consistency, and the elimination of non-biological explanations. This is why the years between 2027 and 2029 matter so much. Early data will not end the search. It will refine it. If Europa Clipper detects organics in a plume, scientists will want to know whether those compounds appear again. If chemical energy indicators show up in one region, future flybys can target nearby areas to see if the pattern holds. The spacecraft's path is designed to evolve as knowledge grows. By the time the mission enters its most detailed phase in the 2030s, every low-altitude flyby will be guided by what came before. Regions that show signs of ocean material reaching the surface will move to the top of the list. Areas with unusual salinity or magnetic signals will be revisited from multiple angles. This is how uncertainty narrows. Certain combinations of findings would be especially compelling. Organic molecules detected alongside evidence of liquid water and chemical energy would suggest more than coincidence. Measurements showing a salty, circulating ocean point to long-term stability rather than a stagnant reservoir. Repeated plume detections with consistent chemistry would indicate an active system connecting the ocean to the surface. Each signal alone can be explained away. Together, they become difficult to ignore. Interpreting this flood of data is where NASA's astrobiology program becomes essential. Teams of biologists, chemists, geologists, and planetary scientists will analyze the results independently, challenging assumptions and testing alternative explanations. No single instrument or group gets the final word. Consensus is built slowly through debate and replication. Even if the evidence grows stronger, confirmation may still take years. Science does not move at the speed of headlines. Declaring life beyond Earth would demand extraordinary confidence, because the implications are irreversible. Once the claim is made, it cannot be taken back. That is why discovery is not a moment, it is a process, a gradual tightening of possibilities until one explanation remains standing. 2027 may not deliver an answer, but it may begin something far more important. The moment when humanity realizes the question is no longer if life exists beyond beyond Earth, but how long it has been there, waiting to be noticed. If we find life, everything changes. If Europa Clipper finds evidence of life, even the simplest kind, the rules change instantly. Biology would no longer be an Earth-only story. Evolution would no longer be a one-time accident. Life would become a process that can begin wherever the conditions allow it to start. A second origin of life would tell us something profound and practical. If life emerged independently beneath Europa's ice, then the universe is not silent. It is likely busy. Microbial life on Europa would mean that chemistry plus energy plus time naturally lead to biology, not rarely, but repeatedly. That single conclusion would outweigh decades of speculation. This discovery would also reset the question we ask. The search would move from asking whether we are alone to asking how common life truly is. Europa would no longer be an exception. It would be a data point, one that justifies missions to other ocean worlds like Enceladus and Titan, and eventually to Europa itself. Europa Clipper is already laying the groundwork for what comes next. Its findings will determine where landers might touch down, where future probes could sample ice, and whether a sample return mission is worth the risk. Every measurement it takes is narrowing the search, turning guesswork into planning. So here's the real question. If we discover life on Europa, do you think it means we are late to the universe or right on time? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.